Okay, in this video we're going to uh, display the table header and then do the math behind this table. We may actually get to displaying the table uh, too. I'm not, not sure about that one yet, but definitely the table header and the math to generate all the, uh, all the data for the rows of the amortization table. So let's go back to our HTML. So this is the JavaScript file. We'll go back to loan. Um, again, mine loan.php, probably for you it's loan.html. And for the table header, what I want to do is just create the, the table. So uh, table, we'll do a cell padding of 15 and a border of 1. And then this is only going to be the first row, all right, because it's just going to be, excuse me, the header of our amortization table. Amortization table. There you go. I hate that word. Um, anyways. Okay. So uh, the first one, I want, let me actually do this first, then I'll explain it. So we got a width, 30, a line, center, uh, bold, payment. So the first one is going to be the payment number. You know, like first payment, second payment, and so on. Now I have a width. I'm going to have fixed widths because if you've created tables, you know that the the cell size is determined is based on I shouldn't say determines is based on what's inside the cell, um, and I don't want it to change based on what's inside. You know, if the loan amount's bigger than normal loan amounts, I don't want the cells to get too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the width of each one. That way the cell size doesn't change no matter how small uh, our numbers get. So let's do second one. This one is going to be what our payment, our monthly payment is. So I'm going to have that actually at 60. I'm going to line it in the center. Fold. Now I'm just going to call this payment. Now this is going to be the same for every single row because our monthly payment doesn't change. Uh, the last payment might, but I'll talk about that in the last video. Then we got this one will be our principal because the way that these tables work, these amortization tables, you have an, an, a payment right there. And then in that payment, some of it will go towards the principal. And then some of it will go towards interest. So that's what the next cell will be. So line. Center, bold, and then this will go towards interest. Okay. I also want to keep track of the total interest. So let's see, I'm going to 85. Now, this column, what's going to happen is every time you make a payment, some of it's going to go towards interest, as I have here, some of it will go towards the principal. The amount that goes towards principal is actually what's deducted from your current balance because the money that goes towards interest just goes into the bank's pockets. So I want to know at the end how much did I pay total in interest. So this column is just going to keep a running, to uh, running total of the interest we spend. So I'm going to call this interest paid. And our last column will be what the balance is because I want to keep track of the current balance. So I'll just say balance, save us some room. And that should be it. Let me. So we end the row, let's end the table. Okay, we should be good to go. Let's go take a look at uh, our table header. Okay, that works for me. Um, again, we can we can fix this up a little bit later with some CSS. But uh, that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the math uh, to generate all the rows or all the, you know, principles and interest and interest paid. So let's do that. Uh, let's go back. Here we go. All right, so that was in the HTML file. Let's go back to the JavaScript file. And then, okay, so below here, we're going to get started with j the JavaScript. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm, it's very similar to how what I did up here. I'm going to create a table to display to the user, but I'm going to do it all in JavaScript so that the entire HTML code for the table is stored in one variable. And then I'm just going to do something exactly, well, exactly this, only with the table to display the amateurization table. Yeah. All right, let me just start writing it. So we got our, here, you know what? Let's, uh, let's do something like this. That way, keep it a little organized. All right, so we're going to have a table or a variable. I'm going to call table. And just like with info, I'm going to declare it and leave it empty. And then let's actually make our first row. Now what I want to do is in the first row, okay, which is going to be right here, I want to have payment zero. So basically I want all of this blank. I want this to say zero. I want to leave these blank and then have my first row, but it's kind of like our zero row, our pre-payments. Um, I want the balance right here to be 100 and, well, whatever your loan amount is. So we have, you know what? Yeah, we'll be fine. So let's start with table plus equals, and then we'll open the table. It has to be identical to the table that I had done previously at the beginning of the video. So we're going to have padding of 15. Remember to use single quotes in here because you are already inside a string. Uh, border 1. Okay, and then we'll open up our row. I'm indenting for the table cells, just kind of keep things organized. All right, so our first cell, remember the width is 30, and this was our payment column, so my payment is going to be 0. Then... The next one was our pay monthly payment, but again, because this is payment zero, we actually haven't made a payment yet, so I just want to leave this blank. So we're going to have a width of 60, but to leave it blank, I'm just going to throw in a, uh, uh, well, one of these non-breaking space, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see, close that up. All right, and then I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to do this a couple more times. Oops. Okay. So then this was our principal. This one was for interest. This one was for interest paid, which I believe I made 85. And then this is for our current balance. I made that have a width of 70. But now instead of, it's not going to be blank because I know what my current balance is. Now a payment zero, we haven't made any payments yet, so it's going to be whatever our, our well, our loan amount is. So that's going to be, uh, what did I call it? Loan AMT. But remember, this, we've broken out of the HTML, and this is our JavaScript variable, but I want to round it. So I'm going to have round loan amount. I'm going to round that to two decimals. And then I'm going to close the table, or I'm sorry, I'll close the row. I'm not going to close the table yet. Okay. Actually, I will just so, I'm going to have to eventually. So way down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write table, and I'm going to close the table, and then I'm going to do the document get element by ID and what, what was it? Oh, I think it was called table. ID was called table. ID was called table dot enter HTML and that's going to have what do I call it? Table. So the HTML code for this table, the amortization table, will then be stored in this variable which will be sent over to the ID, div ID table, 
and that's where it's going to be. So let's just save this. Previous video got uploaded. Okay, so let's save it, and let's see what we get. All right. All right, so let's put in some numbers here. All right, so that worked. That did not. Let's go check out. Oh, because I didn't save it. All right. Refresh. Okay, you can see how that the, our first row shows up. Payment zero, so nothing else. You know, we haven't actually made a payment or a principal or interest or anything like that, but we have a current balance of $180,000. So now, what I want to do is I want to start my loop that goes through and generates every row of my table. So what I do is I'm going to say while the current balance is greater than zero. All right, and then in here what I'm going to do is create the rows. Well, what's the current balance? Well, initially the current balance is our loan amount. Okay. And then the way that this is going to work is that each row is going to have a specific payment number. So this is payment 0, and payment 1, payment 2, all the way up until you've made all your payments. So what I'm going to have is a, a payment counter. So I'm, I keep using uh, payments and, and all that a lot. So I'm just going to call this the counter. Um, so here, we'll just call this payment counter. And we'll start that at 1 because we've already written in the first, or I should say the zero payment row. So I can now start with payment one. And I, what else do I need? I also need a total interest variable. Since I'm gonna have a column that keeps a running total of my interest, I need to initialize it at zero. Okay, so I think we'll actually stop there. And then in the next video, I should be able to do get all the math done and we'll we'll write the table and we should we should be able to finish in the next video. All right, so I'll see you then.